Punch, it's all in the mind. So saith John Lennon on his deathbed in 1932, and it's never been more true than in the Renegade series. Now, this request was sent to me by Patreon Stephen Burgess, and he'd actually only requested that I take a look at the second game in the series, Target Renegade, but as I have so little experience with the series as a whole, I decided to give him his money's worth and take a swing at all three. Take a swing at all three. Did you get that? That's, that's bloody good writing, that is. Anyway, the Renegade series, what's that all about then? Well, they were originally games that came from a place called an arcade. Arcades were basically big warehouses full of tobacco smoke, teenagers and broken hardware. People would typically gather in these places to pay anywhere between 10 pence and 2 pound to try out the future of gaming for a few seconds before it killed them off. They were exciting places, and Renegade was a machine that I've honestly never even seen before in my life. I'm not sure why I missed it. I grew up in Blackpool, where you couldn't walk two metres without bumping into an arcade machine, so I have no idea why I've never come across Renegade. And all through the years, it's not a game I ever really came across anywhere. I don't think the name helps much. It's just a very generic 80s sounding name, and I think in my head I was always just picturing something else. Anyway, enough of that shite, let's get to it. Three games to rule them all, and they were named Renegade, Target Renegade, just to make sure anyone who tries to alphabetize their games gets an aneurysm, and Renegade 3, the final chapter, because why not just add a number on the last one and none of the others? If you're not familiar with the series, you may be wondering why a single arcade game managed to spawn three home releases, and that's a good question. I don't know. So let's take a look at Renegade first. While the arcade original was developed by Technos, the ports from arcade to home computer systems were all over the shop. The NES version was handled in-house, but the Master System version was developed by Natsume. And then on the home computers, we had software creations developing the games in America, where Taito published them. But in Europe, you had Imagine Software developing the game and Ocean publishing them. This is a scenario one can only describe as wacky. Wacky and dated. This kind of thing just doesn't happen anymore, and it makes me glad that as far as this video is concerned, none of that shit matters. I'm here for the Imagine Software version on the ZX Spectrum. While my experience with the arcade originals fairly slim on the ground, it really doesn't take much to see that this is a bloody good port. I mean, really ruddy bloody good. From the graphics to the controls to the level layouts to the feel of the game, I'd be hard pressed to find many ways the game could have nailed it any more than it does. If you're like me and you've not played Renegade before, the object is pretty simple. Punch, kick, repeat. It's a scrolling beat-em-up with minimal scrolling. You're dropped into a testosterone fueled arena where a big gang of angry people are really, really annoyed with you for some reason, and it's up to you to make sure that this collection of arseholes is wiped up for good. After a set number of enemies are downed, you'll be presented with a boss to defeat. He's typically harder than the other guys, which is a given really, I shouldn't have to explain that, keep up. They'll often require different tactics to the normal dude you'll be beaten up, and you've got a decent array of moves at your disposal. As well as the aforementioned punches and kicks, you've got backwards kicks, you've got grabs, you've got the ability to beat the ever-loving shit out of someone while they're already on the ground, gasping for air, and you've got a flying kick. You need the flying kick. The flying kick is a godsend, because your enemies like to form an orderly queue while the carnage is kicking off. You are absolutely surrounded by these arseholes, but the flying kick, for the most part, is the move that will see you gain some breathing room, because it instantly knocks them flying. And when they hit the ground, that's either an opportunity for you to go and make sure they dematerialize, or it gives you the chance to deal with all of the other shit that's constantly kicking off all around you. The game doesn't let up. It's a tornado of fists and kicks and spit and blood and vomit. It never ends until it does once you've beaten the boss, but then it starts back up again and you've got even tougher stuff to deal with. It's simplistic, sure, but it's got meat to it. The small scale arenas offer a mouthful of beat em up fun that finishes in a rapid time, and the consistent pace is set from the second you press start. It's difficult but doable, and while it'll punish you for a wrong move, it's always almost due to something that you've done in the heat of battle by mistake. Renegade is about positioning, it's about picking your moments, and it's about flying kicks. It's always, it's always about flying kicks. Or you can just throw them off the edge, that works as well. The enemies for each level are different enough to stop the action getting stale, as are the bosses you have to deal with, and while the number of levels is fairly slim on the ground, the gameplay is so simple to get into that it barely even matters. It's tough enough that it'll take you multiple attempts to beat it, but it's also a game that demands you play through it more than once anyway. It's a game that's been designed to grab you by the gameplay bollocks. It's not one that's going to have you contemplating its hidden message when you've finished smashing people's face into the floor. 
Now, the arcades never received a sequel, but Ocean decided that was horse shit, so they made one for the Spectrum anyway. This game, Target Renegade, had nothing to do with Technos at all, and was developed by Ocean from the ground up. Mike Lamb and Bob Wakelin returned as developers, but this time it seems the team was fleshed out even more, bringing in Simon Butler and Jonathan Dunn, amongst others, names that fans of Ocean Software typically assigned with a badge of quality. But could Target Renegade be any good? A sequel based on a port of a game that Technos himself seemed to just leave in the dust? Surely this game would be a monumental pile of shit. Well, it's not. It's at least as good as the original. For most people, it's even better. Taking a similar formula to Renegade, Target Renegade keeps the fighting engine intact, flying kicks, but expands the scope of the levels. Instead of fighting in small arenas, you're treated to a more standard scrolling beat em up affair. Think Streets of Rage, and you're pretty much there. While the original drops you straight into the action with no room to breathe, Target Renegade's expansion into scrolling levels means there's often less enemies to deal with and more walking. There's a lot of walking, and it's it's not very fast walking. This is fine, of course. The level design, the graphics, the feel of the game is all very much of a high quality, and my complaints for Target Renegades are stupidly small. In terms of where the improvements lie, however, the enemy variety is better, especially in the way they react to different moves. It feels like the game really tests your metal a bit more. There are weapons you can pick up, which is handy as they're just as powerful as the beloved flying kick, and the variety of bosses is spiced up a bit as well. My favourite boss being this one guy with a gun who, for the most part, ends up shooting the enemies more than he shoots you. You've got to champion the underdog. There's new music here as well, although it's far removed from what you'd normally expect from a beat-em-up. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's almost soothing. It feels completely antithetical to the action that's taken place on screen. A little somber? A little regretful? It's a strange choice, but it's nice all the same. Everything about Target Renegade feels like they took the original and polished it. They increased the scope, they polished the fighting and the enemy behaviour, they improved the sound and music, they added a two-player mode, they took what they had and they stretched it in every direction. And that makes it difficult to talk about when you line up all the games next to each other. Everything you can say about Target Renegade is as a direct result of Renegade being so bloody good. It's a game that, for the most part, feels like a direct continuation of the first game. That could sound like a put-down, but it's really not. Renegade's small number of levels and even smaller scope means that a sequel that did just... more of the same is actually a really welcome ointment. You'll often find that sequels like to pile on additional features or mechanics that really don't fit in the game, where previously everything worked as intended. When they do stuff like that with a sequel, you always have to question what on earth they were th Renegade 3. Renegade 3 is not like Renegade. Renegade 3 is not like Target Renegade. Renegade 3 makes me angry. Where the first two games used roughly the same fighting mechanics, it seems that Renegade 3 saw fit to change practically everything. Gone are the flying kicks, replaced here with a crouching punch that seems to be the only attack that will have anywhere near enough reach to actually do anything about the swathe of dinosaur and cavemen attacks. Yes, dinosaurs. While Renegade and Target Renegade were rather grounded affairs, Renegade 3 jumped the Megalodon and sent us back in time. While I commend the effort to try and take the series in a different direction, Time travel is not the place I would have started, but here we are. It's not all dinosaurs, you also go to ancient Egypt to fight mummies, medieval times to fight knights, and on an alien spaceship to fight aliens. I haven't seen any of that though, because the game introduces another mechanic that literally no one asked for, instant kills from gaps in the floor. That's right, we've got platforming segments. We've got platforming segments in a fighting game, and if you mistime this jump, you're losing a life. Nothing about this feels right. You have to hit a combination of buttons in order to get your idiot renegade to do anything. If you press those buttons wrong, you'll instead walk into the pit of death and ha, joke's on you, now you're dead. The graphics are nice, but cluttered. The new fighting mechanics don't feel as weighty or interesting as its predecessors. The setting is dumb. The platforming is horrible. 
The scrolling segments are largely pointless as you can just run past everything, and then you have to fight off waves of baddies in an arena which basically just entails crouch punching left and right in succession. Which to be fair sounds easy on paper, but I really have to stress that if you haven't played the game, this control scheme feels horribly sticky. If you're punching in one direction, you can't punch in the other direction without first letting go of the keys you're currently pressing. So you're constantly caught out by enemies that creep up behind you because you'll be panic pressing buttons. It doesn't feel right. None of it feels right. The original game, the arcade version that is, was a three button affair. One button for jump, one to attack left and one to attack right. When porting the game to the Spectrum, they reduced that down to a single button. While it's not arcade perfect in that respect, they at least managed to make the game feel similar. They didn't ham-fist the controls. In Renegade 3, you'll feel like your fists are actually made of ham. That's how clunky it feels, you get bacon hands. Just to kick the can a little further down the road, they also removed the multiplayer that was such a hit in the previous title. I mean. It's not really an issue for me because I don't have any friends, but at the time, this was another kick in the teeth for anyone who picked up a copy of Crash Magazine and saw the rave reviews it was getting. 91% in Crash, 84% in computer and video games. I honestly do not know what these people were playing. But let me be clear, the complaints with Renegade 3 mostly come down to this. It's not Renegade, and it's not Target Renegade. Renegade 3 is not one of the worst games ever made, it's a deeply mediocre game with some incredibly maddening flaws, and it's sat in the shadow of two fantastic games that came before it. If the game didn't carry the Renegade tag, it likely wouldn't get half of the hate that it does from fans. Is it worth playing though? Not really. Not while the previous two games exist anyway, which are far, far more worthy of your time. So that's the Renegade series. Two golden gongs and a wet plop. Now, most people seem to put the sequel at the top of their list, but I'm going to be honest, there's something about the immediacy of the first game I really love. There are improvements in the sequel I'd really like to see in the first game. I'm not a big fan of all the enemies respawning when you die in the original, for instance. But for me, the first two games are absolutely top-tier Spectrum titles, and the line of quality that separates them is a thin one at best. They both provide the same style of game presented in a slightly different manner. If you've yet to play either of these, then I can only suggest you get your hands on both, because they're equally worth your time. The third one though, well, if only time machines existed in real life, that's all I can say.